Hi. The very first two sessions has been explained about the prerequisites for SAP Networks and Point 4 Gateway installation uh, media, and as well as uh, the second session has been shown you how to install and uh, complete installation process and all that. And the third session today, I will I would like to go with the post steps once the gateway has been installed. So to start off with, uh, let's go to transaction code SPRO. Expand SAP NetViewer, expand SAP Gateway, expand our data channel, and expand configuration. And here you, you will see activate or deactivate SAP Gateway. So first you have to execute this. It will pop up saying that, you know, it has been deactivated or if you want to activate, yes, we would like to activate this. So make sure you see this message SAP Gateway is active. So uh, this is the first step for uh, Fiori configuration um, once as part of our post steps. So once this is activated, so we need to proceed for the next steps uh, for configuring <coughs> some profile parameters. Go to our seats. Your OS is uh, Unix uh, based platform. So if it is a windows we can directly set it as a 443 or anything which is related to the https uh, uh, stuff so in in our case it should be an external bind uh, so we have set it as uh, 443 as well as 8443 so once these parameters has been set for rz uh, in rz10 so we, this is also uh, we need to specify these parameters to you know, for the service or port that that is used for a protocol either the service name or the port number can be specified so just to explain uh, in detail about these parameters like what is its value and range and its uh, syntax for protocol uh, it can have uh, any values like HTTP, HTTPS, SMTP, P4 uh, so on <coughs> And with the uh, with, with prod equals to HTTPS as you can see here, and port with option port you can specify the port by its number or service name. So the uh, the value zero means that no port for inbound connections can be opened for the specified protocol. And the timeout options we can set for uh, uh, can be configured. You know the network timeout like timeout and the process processing timeout proc timeout here these two uh, parameters so timeout is is a keep alive timeout for the network connection and uh, proc timeout is a processing timeout for communication with the back end which is work process so once the parameters has been set uh, restart the server so once the server has been restarted, uh, let's proceed to create a security role, trusted RFC. Go to transaction code PFCG. So Z is for is security trusted RFC. So let's create this role. <coughs> As it has already been created, so I just want to add couple of authorizations here so go to authorizations tab change authorization data so manually add all these uh, authorizations profiles so that uh, you will not have any issues while accessing the front and back end uh, fury applications i just turned on uh, technical names on so that to, you can see uh, what are the manual authorizations required. So add S underscore RFC, S underscore RFC ACL, S underscore service, and uh, S underscore develop in transaction code I just mentioned as uh, star, so which is taking for everything. So we need to fine tune and uh, define the security roles accordingly. So once all these uh, authorization profiles has been added, uh, just generate it and save it. Generate it. 
So now the authorization profile has been created. So I just have signing to my user. So this step is really required uh, to make sure the both systems, like you know, the front end and the back end, are uh, having the same roles assigned to you in you in, for your user. So in terms of uh, embedded system, like uh, in our case, it is an embedded system. So in this case, we uh, we can create one trusted RFC. But in terms of a central hub system, which means like the gateway box is different and as well as ECC box is different. In that case, we need to create the same security role, trusted RFC between those two systems and uh, in, sorry, in each individual systems. And that role has been assigned to your user, irrespective of whether the Fiori uh, PFCG roles has been assigned or not. So the first step is you need to have the security trusted RFC role to be assigned with the necessary authorization profiles. Once this is done, let's go and create and trusted RFC between, between these two systems. So now as a next step, uh, we'll go and create system aliases. So go to SPRO transaction code and uh, expand SAP Netweaver, expand SAP Gateway, expand our data channel, expand configuration, and expand connection settings, expand SAP Gateway to SAP system. Here, manage SAP system aliases, so execute that. So as you notice, uh, I've created two system aliases which is talking to the backend system and these two are by default uh, came along with SAP so do not touch those uh, local and MG1 <coughs> so I created one system alias which is my SID underscore client uh, with the RFC and just notice the software version for um, for without process gateway we need to make sure it has been pointed to the default and the system ID and its respective client. So these, these are the parameters which should be uh, required while creating a system alias. So in terms of a process gateway system alias, this is required for uh, approval process. So for in, in that scenarios, we use uh, this system alias. So make sure the software version has been selected as IWPGW forward slash BWF. So the, these are the only two system LSS required in our case. So let's uh, save it <coughs> and go back. So once a system